So we now have all the files generated for the mail boot uh, slots. And let me show here, we have the mesh itself, the skinned mesh render uh, that's related to this mesh here. And we have the slot itself that is actually accessing the skinned mesh render here. So now we actually want to see this working. And so we want to be able to test this. Uh, for that, what we are going to do, uh, we'll get back to here to the scene. And I will make sure I'm working on the example scene of the slot and overlay files. Okay, so here we go. And the first step is take, uh, taking a look here on the slot library. So if we actually want uh, to test this slot using the Yuma crowd, uh, Basically, this scene is a copy of the Yuma Crowd sample scene. So, if we want to test the Svoot using the Yuma Crowd, we actually need to, first of all, uh, fill the slot library with these new slots. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag this here. And uh, after that, here's the slot file. And I'm going to order by name and update the list. So now we have here the mail boot uh, 01. Perfect. So now the next step is to actually go here on the Yuma crowd. And this is probably uh, another uh, step that might be a problem for some of you guys if you were trying to follow the old tutorials. Because now we have something uh, called the, the random pool. This is something that didn't exist before. And basically what this solves uh, is the necessity to understand and to actually code uh, and edit the Yuma crowd code to use different slots. Now it's possible to actually generate avatars um, with uh, custom slots in faults actually having to understand and fully uh, be aware of how Yuma crowd works. So now we can actually set here the, the random pool and do the, those settings, those adjusts here. So you can notice we have a human male and one Yuma female on the random pool. Let me click in one of them so you can see here. Those are on the random sets. This is responsible basically for telling uh, Yuma crowd uh, which races can be generated and which assets, which slots and overlays can be used for, for those races. In our case, I want to keep this as one. And uh, I'm not going to use the Yuma mail because I want to also provide this file for you. So I'm actually going to uh, create a new folder here on the tutorial files. And I will call this one the random sets as well. And I'm going to duplicate the Yuma mail random sets here. Where are you? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Here. And this I will call uh, boot01. Not a beautiful name, but it will be useful enough. So uh, now I need to tell Yuma crowd I'm not going to use Yuma mail anymore. I'm going to actually use the this different random set that I'm also going to provide on the tutorial files. So this is the random set that we are going to work on. I will expand here so we can look how it works. And I'm actually going to focus on the element number six. So just to uh, try explaining the basics here, each of those elements is actually a potential slot that can be used. So in this case, for example, 
we have the uh, only one possible slot for the element 0 and it's the mail lies. So in this case we are always going to use the mail i slot for all of the human mail rays uh, of stars generated. Okay. And here on element number 6 I know we have the mail feet. So in this case we have the same situation. All of the avatars will be using this slot, male feet. And we have here something interesting. It tells us that it uses a shared overlay list. So if you're already familiar with the old video tutorials, this is basically telling Yuma, uh, the male feet that it should be using uh, the overlay list from the source number two. This basically uh, tells it to use the, um, the the texture or the overlays from the body itself. So the male feet, the male hand, all of them use the same overlay uh, from the body itself. It's shared between all of them. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is to actually include another possibility here. So two now, and instead of male feet, I'm actually use uh, going to use the the boots. In this case, male boots zero one. Again, this is really important. This name here is not this one here. It's actually the string for the slot name. So we need to be sure we are using the exactly the same uh, same name here. Okay, so this uh, being set here. Uh, so we know we'll have uh, half of the, the probability of uh, using uh, the male feet and half for using the male but uh, zero uh, but zero one. And I will keep the use shared overlay list with the source of the index number two. So in this case, as I uh, still didn't import the overlay for the boot itself, I'm going to use the body texture uh, for the boot itself. So it's not going to look okay. It's going to be ugly. But we'll be sure if the mesh itself for the male boot is actually working or not. So this being done, let me close here. And everything is set up. Now, as we only have one element here, we are only going to generate male avatars. And considering the statistic, uh, statistics, Half of them should be using the male boots. So let's see how how this ends up. Okay, we have uh, 16 avatars. And we have here the, the male boots. As you can see, the color is crazy. Let me remove the, the stag. Okay. So you can see here that uh, it's already uh, using the, the mesh itself. There are some other uh, things I want to mention as we don't have the, this area here of the boots visible because we uh, were not using any true uh, sided uh, shader or handling this properly yet. So this is one of the things I would like to uh, change on the next video and uh, of course we are using the skin on the boots and it looks really weird but at least we know the, the mesh itself is working and actually if I go here on the game select one of those with the right click and I change the fit size you will notice that the boot is already adjusting 
and we can also move the upper and the boot is working as expected. Also, other, uh, other information, other subject I, I should mention and that will be uh, more, um, we will be talking more about this on the following video, is this, uh, this situation here. The junction between the jeans mesh and the, the boot itself. As you can see, it's not working on matching perfectly because at any, in any moment we consider this junction either on creating the jeans and, uh, on the boot creation. So the junction won't be perfect in this case. And, uh, I'll try to handle or at least reduce the problem we have here on the following video. So, uh, this is something I will also provide on the, on the tutorial files. Okay. So again, we reached the limit of this video length and we will be continuing this on the following one and finally working with the overlays themselves. So that's it. Goodbye guys. See ya.